How are you guys doing? Got a new video for you. This is Neil from MasterPaintingNow.com. This is one of my students' work. And I just want to uh, show some things that could help in the process of drawing so he doesn't develop bad habits. Um, I do have to say this, this guy is putting in so much work that he's bound to be a great artist because he's putting so much practice uh, and, you know, like he sent me so much work that he's been doing and I'm sure that's only a part of the exercises he's been doing. And so, yeah, practice, practice, practice. That's how you get good. And I think he's on his way to being a great artist. Right. So um, I'm going to start with this middle figure here. So the first thing is, let's go ahead and turn this down so you can see my lines. I'm going to draw over it. So the first thing is, is your torso is, is quite short. If you think about the length of your torso, I got to draw above that. There we go. If you think about the length of your torso and the body, um, you can actually just do a quick like head measurement here, and you can see that the head measurement, you know, is not quite is not quite four heads tall. But also, what makes this look look shorter, you can actually keep it this length. Um, you could do this for like you know, it seems like you have a, an anime or manga type uh, influence. But I recommend doing a, a slightly longer torso and then just make the legs longer. That's still going to give you that anime look, right? We have this kind of shorter looking torso just by making the legs longer. But you could still make this work. And what you want to do is, what you want to remember is that the ribs, they would probably start right around, or they'd stop right around here, right? So remember, you want to remember this basic shape here. You have a basic rectangle shape, and you should get used to this kind of size right here it's basically a perfect square so let's say that's a perfect square and you divide that you divide that square in half and you add that same length down here and that gives you the overall rectangle shape you want to get used to that rectangle shape because one it's the rectangle shape of the rib cage but it's also the rectangle shape of the head you can fit a head you know into this shape here and make a that's the size of that anyway and then you can kind of you know round out the top and you'll get used to just kind of making this bullet shape here like this for the rib gauge and then up here where the collarbones would be and that's where you attach latissimus dorsi and the neck and then your trapezius and that would come you know become part of the deltoid here you can also just do you know two circles there anyway The next shape is you want to kind of at, coming up about halfway into this shape, maybe a little bit less than halfway up. You have the crest of the rib cage, and then for a female, you want to come down with a flashlight shape, like this, so that the whole thing kind of looks like a small flashlight facing, oops, facing downward. This is an easy way to help you get the proper, you know, proportions and stuff of the rib cage and the hip bones now from here to here to here this is gonna be a little bit longer than this typically now you could draw them the same length you can actually come down like this that way you have the same length from here to here and that will actually give you a nice figure as well but typically it's a little bit shorter and especially if you want to do more anime you can make it like this All right so that's the basic shape there and then you want to think about you have the crotch line which is here and then you have this line coming out here. This is the leg line. That's where the leg attaches, right? But also you can think about this is where um, I'd like to think about above this is your. So above that line is your um, love handles. And the middle of that would be where you have your belly button. And then below that, is going to be where the leg attaches and it comes out. That's why I just draw this this shape because that accounts for the bone right here, part of the femur bone that sticks out more. And that's where the widest part of the female figure is. And then the legs would come in from there like that. So the, remember, the legs on the outside start way up here. On the inside, they start here. Right, and that gives you a nice, a nice figure in this more anime style. I can make this a little bit, you know, drop the crotch line down a little bit farther here and that would have given me more of a realistic uh, figure where the, the length between here and here. Right, but that's what you want to keep in mind when, when drawing. So if I wanted to keep the, the torso this short, I want to stop right about here for the rib cage. Right, and that's where we're going to come in and start making that shape. So let's go ahead and come out 
and down like this. I could probably go a little bit lower actually with the rib cage, but so kind of draw that same shape in there, and that's going to give you the proper shape of the female form here. You could keep it thinner if you want, you know, the thinner hips, but typically women are going to have the larger hips. I would then make all this much thinner. That way you can make this a little bit wider because you want the hips to be a little bit wider than the rib cage. Right now you have it where it's like the same, so it's more like, like, a, like a male figure. And if you think about then this shape here, right, you have, and I think they're now going to be almost the same size. It's a little bit shorter, so it's about right. Right, so sorry about the dogs. So you see how you kind of started right here. Like, look how smushed your hips are. And you act the little love handle right there. That's like so small. So with this here, with this little correction, we can now start adding in that line right here where the legs are going to come up and attach. And then we can have our, oops, I'll make that a little bit lower. We can make our love handles be right here now. Boom. Right, so now we have our love handles and then we have, you know, and that, and that you know, you, you can like change that shape where it kind of, you know, comes, it's going to be hard to draw over this, but it comes out and down like that. And then comes out like this, and you have the legs coming in like that. So it's kind of see if I can't get that shape. All right, so we can come if you kind of want that kind of shape. All right, that's more how it. I'm going to make this one not come out quite that far. We'll make it like this since you're kind of already had her more thin. What I like to do is I like to draw like almost like little rectangles where my knees are going to be. Cause I know I need, I know like about this, I feel the size of the knee and I know I need, um, this muscle right here, the serratus muscle, which all like this starts from, you know, the, hip up here comes down like that boom I like to draw that shape in there it's a good muscle to start learning learning to draw in here it go it remember it extends to the bottom part of the inside of the knee like that and so that way I know I have skin you know on each side of the knee so I have this shape right here and then that comes up this shape and that comes up like that and that gives me a good place for the knee and then also um, sometimes this um, sartorius muscle I don't know if I call it serratus, serratus are up here uh, I do that a lot anyway this is sartorius muscle sometimes you'll see the vastus medialis right here and that will overlap it so this kind of rolls into that and this is kind of goes behind the vastus medialis you know so you can kind of see that muscle right there I mean either way you get this you know, the shape right here on the inside of the leg, medial side. But anyway, doing that, and then now we know that the belly button, remember the belly button is always below where the rib cage stops, where you have this change in angle. It's always below that. And then if you have, once you have your love handles, and actually it looked better when we, when I just had it going right into the shape. So I'm just gonna do that for now, keep it simple. Then you have that, and then the you know the belly button's gonna be like that. So you know overall the <clears throat> the and also the, the the legs seem like too short from here to here. So now we'd have to now if we're gonna make it this long, we have to come way down like this, right? So now we have you know these long legs, right? Shorter torso. But if I I would get used to making the torso a little bit longer because this is a quite quite a short torso so I would have extended it a little bit a down a little bit further so instead what I would have done is just extend your torso down 
So let's say this right here is like the, that's that bullet shape I'm talking about, right? And then we need to come into that bullet shape and create the rib cage and everything, come down here. Maybe just come a little bit farther, about like that. All right, and then you can have that hip shape, so we can come love handles to the hip like that, and it comes out to the leg. Love handle, hip. And then now we can have it just a little bit longer like that, and then we'll have the leg coming down. Just do a basic oval or circle even. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing there. Why am I drawing it down so low? And then we can, you know, draw the lower part of the leg. So doing something like that is going to give you... And then also you want to make sure you have enough room for the breast between the collarbone. So if your collarbone is here... Right, you want to make sure that there's a space between the collarbone and where the breasts start. There's this, this flat plane right here. So you don't really have much here. And you know you can get into that later for style, because oftentimes anime will have the breasts attaching much higher on the body. But I recommend you know drawing it realistically first, because you might want to add that into your style. Even if you want to draw manga type stuff, by adding this more realistic um skin where it's supposed to be you might actually get a style that's different and, and who knows but either way i would practice it that way and then and then if you want to consciously change it, you can consciously change it right so that flat plane there so the breast is actually going to start more down here by the coastal ridge like so we can have that kind of heart shape and then you have this little bit of skin right here and that's going to come up because that's part of her, right? Because when your arms lifted like that, it, remember this is a pectoral muscle that's, you know, the breast is sitting on top of. And so that pectoral muscle is still going to stretch up into the deltoid. And we can put the belly button where it's supposed to be. Remember, the belly button is in the middle of the love handle. So if you go with the ribs stop and then it comes down to where, like where you'd have the hip bone. That's the love handle. So you can think about the love handle right here. And then in the middle of that love handle, you have the belly button. Right? So that's uh, one thing. And then another thing, too, just make sure you don't get your arms too skinny. Like some, like this over here looks pretty skinny. Um, just think about the volumes. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about this, this pose here. So one, the whole thing is rather skinny. Um, like all this, if you think about this, it's really it's really thin. Now you can draw that as a stylized thing. That's fine, um, but I recommend trying to draw it non-stylized first. Try to draw realistic women. I highly recommend you know looking at models and trying to draw the model. Um, watch some of my recent videos I've been making about how to interpret what you're seeing. So you're still going to be like using your from mind information. But just look at the model and go, okay, that's what I'm trying to draw. That's the pose I'm trying to draw. Assimilate the information and then, and then start applying your from mind information. So don't don't like try to apply angles. Don't try to copy what you see. Try to draw from your mind, but just use the information to alter what you're drawing from your mind. By the way, the same thing applies for the male figure too. So keep the same thing in mind. Um, but with the male figure, you're going to have your bullet shape, coastal ridge, and then you're going to just come straight down into the hips like that. But the, the same idea applies, and then you would have, you know, your pectoral muscles, and you can stretch those, the neck, collarbone, trapezius, and then some of the deltoid here. Just do basic shapes at first. Um, and then, you know, you'd have your 
love handles, which will be like this. And you can, you know, stylize those where they have that kind of cool line coming down. And that's where the belly button's gonna be. And then your abs, this would actually swoop way down more like this. And then your abs would fit in there. And then the legs kind of come right here. And then the, with men, typically the um, the legs actually come out wider down here and then come like that because they have the way the muscles are built. Right? So it's the same idea though, the same measurements. It's just you're coming and you're not coming out wide like you would with the female. Right? So think about this. I just want to, um, so one, I would, I'd make it all like thicker. Um, but let's talk about the breast for a second. So one, like I said, this is too high. And so you can, you can kind of tell because look at how you have to draw this line right here, right? Where the, that pectoral muscle comes. So we know that the pecs actually, the pectoral muscles, if you follow the rib cage like this, the pectoral muscles start way down here and they come up like this and they attach here, right? Remember, they attach almost to the same spot of the arm as the deltoid. So we know the deltoids come like this and they attach to, they insert like, here about halfway into the arm and the pectoral muscle attaches right about there um, so you got to keep that in mind and then also this is impossible what right here so she's not turned too much away from us to get to where we barely see any of that shoulder she has to be turned so far to where that would happen or she has to be pulling her shoulder back but if she's pulling her shoulder back then the arm couldn't extend out this far you can try this yourself, like put your hand, you know, way over here to your other breast, underneath the other breast where it's almost hanging off your rib cage. You have to pull your shoulder forward. It By doing that, it automatically pulls your shoulder forward. If you want to pull your shoulder back, your hand is only going to extend maybe to here, right? And, it ha and so just keep that in mind. Um, so you could do that, just you can't do this. You can't have the arm coming out so far. Then you have the lats that come up and attach underneath there. And they come. Now, like I said, I would I would widen all this here, come out with the butt like that. But um the main thing I want to talk about was was how that connects there and then the breasts themselves. So let's keep room then, like this. And then I'm going to come down here. This right here would be first would be that skin, right? That's part of the actual rib cage. You're kind of seeing the rib cage and a little bit of the fat of the pectoral muscle as it's coming around and attaching over there, but it's being foreshortened. And then the breast is going to start like this. Oops, I don't need to go that far out. Like that. And then we're going to come right about here. Depends how big we make the breast, but like that right so the nipples are going to be more here and then the breast that's facing us is going to be more rounded in fact it's even it's even to be more rounded if not a little bit oval oval this way um, but it's going to be more rounded than even from the front view because you're seeing from this angle we're seeing the breast more from a front view than we are from the front view that is the nipples facing right at us because remember that your rib cage is a curved thing, right? And this is one thing I want to practice too. See how I'm, I'm, draw, I'm actually drawing. I'm not just hovering over this. I'm actually drawing each time I go back over this. That's it, why it's getting a little bit thicker. But you know, practice doing that, like just smooth lines with your pencil. It's even easier with a real pencil than this than this fake pencil, you know, than a drawing tablet. Anyway, the rib cage is rounded, right? So it has this rounded feel right it's not a flat plane it's not a wall it's not a flat wall it's a curved cylinder that the breasts are hanging on and that causes the breast to fall around that shape right around the curvature and so the nipples actually point out like that so from the top view if you're viewing from the top view the breasts are pointing out like this at a 45 degree angle right like that well that means that when this is turned when you're viewing this angle right here, right, this is the camera angle you're viewing, you're seeing that nipple and it's coming straight at you. And look at, you're seeing part of the side, you're seeing the breast more from the straight on view. Uh, and so it looks actually more 
more rounded. It still starts from the same spot here, and you you want to come you know down like that. It might even have a slight angle like like this from this angle. Um, anyway, let's kind of pull it like that, and I want to kind of come right about there, like so. The nipple would be facing us, and then you'd have and that's see that now I still have to draw my pec muscle a little bit higher than that though right about here it kind of comes up and then it kind of attaches like that and then we have the deltoid which kind of comes across like this then you have the bicep tricep make the arm a little bit thicker your arms a little bit thin about like that see and by just kind of thickening all this you know it's already starting to look better and then remember you want to think about the shapes here so you have your rib cage coming down here and then we have the love handles and all that. We still want to, and I would actually extend this down a little bit further. You're, you're, like I said, you're making your torsos a little bit not big enough, quite quite not big enough. So let's kind of go like that. Anyway, um, so right there, I want to think about my hips and my love handles, right? So that comes out like that. And so I want to think about that shape right there. Boom, okay. the love handle kind of comes into the hip, and then the leg kind of comes out from that. And the widest part being here the crotch line and then from here you can think about that same kind of shape here and then now we're seeing like we're kind of seeing part of the buttock extending out there from the side you want to draw that sartorius muscle coming in like this the adductors on the inside here all right so that's kind of the shape i like to think about Maybe we can even change that just a little bit. All right, so I still made the breast, you know, a little bit higher, I think, than what they would be. And then obviously, you're kind of seeing your underdrawing there. But um, so that's a really, really like young. It's still stylized. The breast would actually still come down lower than that. But with the style you're kind of going for, you can go with something like that. But I still recommend, you know, trying to go for that more realistic. I'm just trying to draw on top. If I made the breast too low, then I have to extend all of this down as well. So because your whole torso is quite short. Um, right. So, yeah. Anyway, that's uh, some tips I have. And uh, like I said, you're, you're really off to a great start. You're, um, you're putting a lot of work in, a lot of practice. That's what it takes to be a great artist. I think you're on your way to become become a good artist so yeah and hey um, if you are one of my students and you want to have some feedback then just send me your work and let me know you know I can see if it if it really if it really needs enough feedback to make a video um, so, you know some of them I can just write a couple notes and that's enough for the person to understand and uh, if I feel like hey that can make a cool video that can help other people then I can make a video out of it as well and yeah so Go ahead and feel free to show me your work. And if you're not a student yet, then check out my courses. So masterpaintingnow.com. I'm one of the top art instructors on Udemy. I have over like 83,000, over 83,000. It might even be over 84,000 now. Um, so yeah, go check that out. I have my, my new course out now, Anatomy 2.0. And that will teach you how to draw the figure from your imagination. It condenses all the information from my much older course, my much older anatomy course, which was done in real time, more like a lecture. So it's like 64 hours long. But I'm like, you know what? There's no reason to present this in real time. I don't have to draw in real time to, to teach the point. So I changed the style. And so I managed to take all the information and condense it into 14 hours. So you can learn it all much faster. And I still have drawing samples and things like that. So yeah, it's really cool. Um, and I also have new techniques that I teach. Uh, new ways of thinking about the figure like I really like these shapes here that I that I'm using now but yeah so it's it's a more modern up-to-date version of the old course and a lot of the techniques are actually better um, well I mean it's hard to say whether they're better or not but I like them better and it's what I it's what I use now so it's a more up-to-date course on on how I think about things but definitely check it out uh, right now it's only $13 on my website so just click on that that'll automatically give you the 
the coupon. It is built into the link. So you just click on it and that will take you and you'll see that's $13. That's if you're seeing this like now, like on the 23rd of February, 2021, if you're, but I, you know, the courses go on sale um, every now and again. So just check back. I try to keep, you know, the site up to date with the, with up-to-date coupons. If for some reason you're not seeing it for sale, if you click on it, it says 99 because the sale ran out. Uh, go ahead and just email me on the site and be like, hey, I really wanted to get this on sale. And then I can update the site with the um, coupon code most likely. All right, cool. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Let me know uh, in the comments what you would like me to cover. If there's certain things you want me to cover, let me know what those are. And oh, and one other thing, I just kind of wanted to uh, put the arm in here really fast if you wanted to see that. So we know that the deltoid is going to be seen a little bit here, but it's going to be foreshortened because she's pulling her shoulder back. And then, you'll, and then you'll be able to see how it connects to the arm here. Um, you know, there's going to be a there's going to be a tangent line, I think, no matter what I do here. So I'm going to come like this, and this is going to be where the arm kind of turns. That's where it ends. It's about where it would end. Think about the length of the upper arm. By tangent line, I mean the nipple is touching that. So I, you want to make it to where it's either behind it or more in front of it. And then this is before shortened because it's kind of coming at us. So I'm going to draw where I know the wrist would be, which would be right about here. And then the hand is kind of coming toward us. So I'm going to just kind of go like this and kind of make that basic kind of shape here that I teach. And then we'll have the thumb, which would be like right about there. And then the fingers, I'm just going to have them kind of come like this. All right, so just a basic shape. Then they might be a little bit big. And then now I know I can have the bone here. And let's kind of create the shape, but it's going to be foreshortened. But I still want to create the shape of the forearm here. I might be able to see a little bit. I'm going to be able to see well, maybe a little bit of the elbow right there. And then we're going to see the more mostly muscle. Bam, so it's kind of like that. And then you'd see back there. And actually, we might be able to see a little bit of that part of the arm right there like that. The knuckle would like the finger would start like that. And then you can start, maybe we could put these fingers together. And you can have, or we can keep these three fingers together, and then we can have the pinky kind of coming off like this. And the fingers are a little bit foreshortened because they're kind of coming at us. And you can actually wrap them more to where she has her fingers wrapped down. So if you don't want to have that foreshortening, because sometimes foreshortened fingers look weird. And then um, let's kind of go like this. And then remember the this muscle actually starts up here more like that. You have this angle for the widest part of the form, and then it kind of comes straight like that. Cool. I just I forgot to add the arm in there so just to kind of show how that would look. But all right, again, thanks for watching.